I'm coming up on 16 years of being fully vegan, and of course I believe you can thrive with this lifestyle. I've been doing it for so long. One of the best ways to make sure that you are thriving and getting everything you need is to get your blood tested regularly. As of recent, I've noticed a little bit more hair fall, like when I'm doing my hair, than usual, so it was a good indicator to me that I just wanted to check my levels and see where I'm at. So whether you've been vegan for a long time or you're thinking about it or you've just started out, I know that one of the biggest concerns for a lot of people out there, myself included, is just making making sure you're getting enough nutrients in that you need to thrive. Especially in the beginning, people are always gonna ask you, where are you gonna get your protein? How do you get B12? Are you getting enough nutrients? Are you getting this? Are you getting that? All of us, regardless of what diet you follow, can become deficient in something. And so as I get older, it's just really something that's become pretty important to me to check on a yearly basis to make sure I've got all my bases covered. And if I don't, then I'm able to supplement before anything becomes sort of a problem. It's all very serendipitous that this video is sponsored by Let's Get Checked because Let's Get Checked is a worldwide leader in at-home health test kits. I love this because it gives me the freedom to understand what's going on in my body without getting the permission of a doctor first. I don't have to leave my home. I don't have to go to a lab to get my blood test drawn. I can do it all in the comfort of my own home. And as a business owner and a busy mom, you know I feel like that is the most convenient way to do anything. Now, if you go to their website, they have a ton of health tests that you can do, but what I was interested in today was really testing my micronutrient levels. I wanted to test my copper, my magnesium, my selenium, my B12, vitamin D, E, and zinc. Now you can get all of those from your food and that's primarily what I do, except for the B12, which I do supplement with, but it's still good to get a check. Let's head over to the kitchen. I'm gonna take you through what it looks like to test myself. Then we're gonna send it off to the lab and I should get my results in about two to five days. Use my code for a discount, veganmichelle25, and I'll also link this down in the description if you just wanna to go to their website and see what kinds of things you could test yourself. Check it out, because I'm a huge fan and honestly, I wouldn't share anything with you that I wouldn't personally use myself. Let's get checked. From beginning to and everything with Let's Get Checked was super easy to understand. There were instructions in my packages, texts, and emails from them. Not too many, but just enough to help me know what to do. Go. Everything was very clear to understand, really easy to complete the details on the label. The instructions were extremely clear. They emailed me and texted me and let me know how to activate my kit online before I collected my sample. I made sure to wash my hands so everything was nice and clean and then I prepared to collect my sample. I used this nifty little assistant to get my blood in my finger going so that I would make sure that I have enough to collect my samples unscrewed my blood collection tube, allowed my finger to just vibrate for a little bit, and then you just use this lancet to pierce your finger. It doesn't hurt at all. After piercing the skin, then you just wipe away the first drop of blood, and then you collect your sample into the collection tube. I didn't need to squeeze my finger. It didn't really hurt. I just waited until the blood droplets went in. I sealed up the blood collection tube, and I mixed my sample. Then I sealed the sample in the biohazard bag. I just placed that right back in the box that it came in, and that was that. I put it into the packaging that they gave me, and all I had to do was go drop it off at a UPS drop area. So simple. I'm gonna drop this off. Over. Thank you. Okay. Easy. I'm really in the beginning stages of prepping my next cookbook. And so what is always really important to me when I am testing out recipes is to make sure that I have fueled myself or I'll just keep tasting and tasting and tasting everything that I am testing out. So I'm having this fantastic smoothie from Juice and Blend. I love that grapefruits are back in season. And just sitting here doing a little bit of posting on Instagram before I get started. tested this bread a few times before. This time I'm using three cups of whole wheat pastry flour and one cup of all-purpose flour, a tablespoon of active dry yeast, half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of maple syrup, and two cups of warm water. In a big mixing bowl, I'm adding the flour, the yeast, and the salt and mixing it together. And then I'm putting the two cups of warm water and dissolving the maple syrup in there. Then I'm mixing it into the bowl with the flour and the salt and the yeast. I'm putting some parchment paper in a nine by five loaf pan, and then I'm just transferring the dough to that. 
I'm covering it with a clean, damp tea towel. While it's rising, then I'm just preheating the oven to 390 Fahrenheit, and I'm letting it rise for about 25 to 30 minutes. And I want it to rise at the same level as the loaf pan so it doesn't overflow or become like a really muffin toppy bread. And then I'm gonna place in the oven for about 45 minutes. Comes out looking really beautiful. This is actually a really easy loaf of bread to make on your own. And you know, I need your help. It would be so special to me if you tried this recipe out and you let me know what you think or what you would suggest so that you can be a part of this recipe creation for my upcoming cookbook as well. Now I know that all purpose flour is not whole food plant-based, but adding in that cup of it makes this a much more moist bread. Perfect. It's really good. Okay, so I've got my phone here. I'm going to take a look at my micronutrient test and it did come back abnormal. So let's see what was abnormal. My magnesium is perfect. Copper is perfect. Zinc is a little bit high, but still okay. Selenium, great. Vitamin D, low. Vitamin D is low. We'll get back to that in a second. Vitamin B12, totally normal. And both of the vitamin E levels checked were totally normal. So let's go to what was abnormal, which was my vitamin D, which is exactly, I knew something was up with my hair because I had that more hair fall. And one of the symptoms of having a lower vitamin D level is hair fall. So I'm really happy that I got this test. So this says, you've received a low vitamin D test result. This means that your vitamin D levels were lower than normal range and may indicate you have a deficiency, which isn't really surprising to me because when I was pregnant with Naya, I was also low in vitamin D. I've supplemented since then, but this is the first time I've actually gotten tested since I gave birth to Naya. Having adequate levels of vitamin D plays an important part in maintaining bone health, supporting your immune system and your overall well-being. Vitamin D comes in two forms, vitamin D2, which is mainly derived from plant sources and fortified foods and vitamin D3, which comes from animal source foods and is made by your skin in response to sunlight. And it's dead of winter here, so I am really not outside very much, but I'm gonna change that. In most cases, vitamin D levels can be improved by getting adequate exposure to natural sunlight and following a healthy diet. Some people also benefit from taking a vitamin D supplement. And then it says some underlying health conditions may affect your ability to absorb or maintain the required amount of vitamin D in your body. So I knew something was slightly off and this answers my question. So the first thing I'm gonna do about it is there's this little pocket of sun on my porch where it's not too cold and windy in the afternoon. And I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna try and get natural light about 15 to 20 minutes on my my bare skin, hands, face, arms, legs, if it's warm enough, <laughs> um, on a daily basis. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'm probably gonna start to supplement with a vitamin D in addition to that. And then I'll get my levels checked again and then see where I am. So I love this, I didn't have to go to a doctor's office, everything has been done, I just went about my life as usual, and now I know kind of a little key to what's been going on with me, but it's totally correctable, which I love. So first things first, I'm gonna go sit in the sun, and then after that, we'll get into the next meal. Okay, so I'm still working on some recipes throughout the day, and but for my main meal, I'm gonna make my split pea soup from Eating Whole. It's really one of my favorite soups. In a large soup pot, I'm just adding a cup of split peas, eight cups of vegetable broth, and a bay leaf, and I'm allowing this to simmer about an hour. After the peas are almost tender, I'm dicing up a medium sweet onion and peeling and chopping one medium sweet potato and one carrot into some rounds. I'm simmering this on a low heat for another 15 to 20 minutes, and that's basically it. You can turn the heat off and cover it and let it stand for about 10 minutes and then I'm adding either fresh dill or dried dill to serve. So delicious, so yummy, so warming. Like in the winter, I absolutely love this soup. No day for me is really complete without a big salad. So I am doing some spring mix, kale, arugula in there, carrots, some red cabbage, tomatoes, cucumbers, celery, bell peppers, whatever I can put in there, jalapeno, I've got some avocado in there too. And now I'm testing out a ranch dressing. You guys ask me for ranch dressing all the time. So here it is. I'm using a cup of raw cashews soaked and drained, half a cup of water, one teaspoon of lemon juice, two garlic cloves, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and about three to four tablespoons of white vinegar, depending on how tangy you want your ranch. I am just putting that into my Vitamix until it's nice and creamy, stirring in a tablespoon of fresh parsley, a teaspoon of fresh chives and an eighth teaspoon of dried dill. And I have to say, I first shared this recipe on my Patreon page and I've made some tweaks since and patrons, don't worry, I've, I've updated as I've made the tweaks. This is a really good recipe and I have to say very, very close to actual ranch and super easy. So I think you're really gonna love it. 
who doesn't love a really good ranch dressing? And just because you're vegan doesn't mean you have to abstain from ranch forever. This is a fantastic sub. So if you were to eat all of these things together, this would be a massive meal. Or you could of course have a salad alone, or you could have the soup and the bread alone, or however you wanna do it. We all really loved everything that I tested today, and I hope that you will too. And again, if you have any suggestions when you make these recipes, let me know. Yeah, I need something new. As always, I've got some great recipes linked for you from today's video down in the description below. If you're interested in Let's Get Checked, I highly recommend it. I hope you can appreciate that I was fully transparent with you guys in this video and just sharing as I was getting the results how this can be very beneficial to know if you've got some kind of weird thing going on that you should probably get it checked. I wanna be as vibrant and as healthy as I possibly can as I age gracefully. If you want some more information about Let's Get Checked, check the description. Have a beautiful day and I'm wishing you all the vibrant health and happiness that you could possibly have in your upcoming year. Mwah.